It's summer at the Skagit, where the splendor of the Northwest can be clearly seen in the mountains surrounding the sparkling lakes. This is the setting for Seattle City Lights Skagit Workforce. After severe drought the last two years, this summer water resources are back to normal and Ross Lake has refilled to capacity. We're here at the Skagit for the August edition of NTV. I'm Sharon Bennett and my co-host for this month is a City Light employee who answered the call to appear on NTV. I'm Stephen Thrush. I work at the Skagit Paint Shop. Summer is a time of natural beauty and activity here at the Skagit. Let's take a look around during this issue of Network on Television. Two programs that operate seasonally are in full swing during the month of August. The Skagit tours show visitors the dams, Ross Powerhouse, Diablo Lake, and the Incline Lift, and the Skagit Youth Camp, which brings economically disadvantaged kids from Seattle and the Skagit Valley out to the country for a camping experience they couldn't have elsewhere. Powerhouse improvements are taking place at Skagit these days with several significant upgrades. We'll take a look at the Ross Unit 44 rebuild and the upgrade of the Diablo Powerhouse. Changing direction and setting a new course for an organization is never easy. It takes efforts in many areas. Over the last year, City Light has experienced an all-employee survey, heard 10 reasons why City Light must change, and made hard decisions on right-sizing for future competitiveness and efficiency. In early August, executive team members and directors kicked off creation of a strategic corporate plan for the utility, one that will set a course of focused change in all areas. Strategic change management was outlined by Wayne Wittes, who stresses that organizations should look for the unreasonability factor when determining what kinds of things need to change. It's the things that people say, this is totally unreasonable, we could never do this, it will never work, it will never fly, it's impossible. Those are the areas that will give you the greatest bang for your buck, if you, if you will, the greatest uh, transformation, the greatest uh, discontinuous jump forward. Um, and in most cases, we set limits upon ourselves in terms of what's doable and what isn't. So, as the quote says, all progress is due to the unreasonable person uh, who suggests and demands that not only is he or she not going to adapt to the world, demands that the world adapts to them. More strategic planning sessions take place over the next several months to set a course that is results driven. A strategic plan should be in place by early 1994. Here at this gadget, some improvements that started a couple of years ago are now in place. The new tour boat, the Alice Ross 3, is in its second year plying the waters. And the new tour dock is a major improvement over the old. It includes a shaded area for tourists to await their ride and a place for interpretive signs to be added in the future. Dry dock repairs are also underway and they include all new concrete footing for the tracks and a new carriage is planned for the future. Diablo Powerhouse is in the early stages of a major rehabilitation project. All the electrical panels within the powerhouse are being upgraded, starting with the load center and high voltage station service. This equipment was installed in 1934. At that time, there was no accommodation for redundancy and future expansion. These upgrades will improve that situation. Where crews were once exposed to excessive high voltage cabling and asbestos covered cables, these improvements reflect upgrades in safety and reliability. Major maintenance is also underway on Diablo Generator 36. To the casual visitor, it appears that Ross Powerhouse is all in pieces. However, what's going on here is a complete rebuild of generating unit number 44. The massive 100 average megawatt generator was the first to come online at Ross Powerhouse in 1951. Although the stator coils were rebuilt a few years back, this is the first time the whole unit is apart for a major rebuild, and it's a true learning experience. This is the first time, 41 years, since the unit's been torn down to the point where we've got the water wheel sitting on the ground. So for all, that, uh, all the people that have worked on this particular project, it's been a first and it's been quite a learning experience. And uh, the, the things that we've learned are going to 
are going to help us down the road a little ways because we're going to have to do this three more times. So we're taking a lot of pictures and taking a lot of notes and hopefully we'll reap the benefits of all of our mistakes from, from this unit. It's a big project with some parts being remachined as far away as Salt Lake City. Work should be complete with Ross 44 back online sometime in October. Well, that really gives me a better understanding of some of the kinds of work going on around here. And you know, Steve, I think we all wish that other people were better able to understand us. Yes, Sharon, this is especially important at work, where individuals working together influence a final product which represents the whole utility. Field crews from North and South Electric Services developed and are attending Prevention of Sexual Harassment, Diversity, and Crew Relations Training to help with better understanding of our diverse workforce. Even when individuals start with the sensitivity to personal differences, this training reinforces communication and understanding. I only see a positive note from this, and hopefully that we'll have a response from this, and it will create a much better working atmosphere. So I'm, on a positive note, I'm looking for the best of out of this. Along with aiding communication, with field crews, there's a direct link to safety through better crew relations. Safety is something that should occur all of the time until it's interrupted like, uh, with natural phenomena like stress, fatigue, fatigue, and also um, conflict that it created is created between individuals as well as the entire crew. So all of those things can interrupt the natural flow of safety. Someone can be mad at somebody else, passively aggressively mad, so they might do something that jeopardizes their safety. And they might be sorry about it later, but at the time, it was a way to vent their anger over the conflict. So conflict does indeed interrupt safety. As our workforce becomes more diverse and complex, there is even a greater need for understanding the differences. I just hope that people in this day and age just understand people for who they are and treat them as human beings. I think that if you go into it with an open mind, you might find that you might learn something or uh, experience something or hear something that you can use in the rest of your life. Sexual harassment training continues with sessions scheduled through later this year and early into 1994. You know, Sharon, the Skagit really is a beautiful place for camping. For some of us, summer camp has a special place in our memories. But some children never have a chance to experience the relaxation and vitality of fresh air, tall trees, clear water, all the experiences that mean summer camp. The Skagit camp, now in its third year, brings kids together who wouldn't otherwise be able to enjoy camp. By the looks on these faces, the program is an overwhelming success. The prettiest thing I've seen is the waterfalls on the way to the cookhouse. My favorite pool because I've ever been in because it's heated. I've never been in a heated pool. I like the nature because you can see waterfalls and stuff, and I like to see waterfalls so you can take pictures on nature walks, and I like art too. I like canoeing because it's fun, and when you go to in the lake, it looks really nice and pretty and stuff. And we go, we go hiking sometimes. It's fun. I didn't expect to see a whole bunch of deer and everything. And I think it's a lot of fun. The week at Skagit Camp includes boat rides, swimming at the pool, games, and fun at meal times. The camp brings urban and rural youth together and provides the children a heightened awareness of the environment, self-esteem, and community. We're really able to share our Skagit Project's beauty, as well as a couple of mosquitoes, through this summer camp activity. Well, we're pretty busy this summer here at the Skagit. I hear there's some weather-dependent work going on back in Seattle as well. Right. At North Substation, 3,000 cubic yards of gravel are being moved in and out as crews work with contractors to provide a better insulating surface for those who work here. Old rock and gravel were removed, and a barrier will be put in place before new crushed gravel is added. Around these transformers, filled with 19,000 gallons of transal oil, 
Rock, formerly used as an insulator, is being replaced with a rubber envelope, creating an oil containment barrier. This is an environmental protection measure in the event of an earthquake or other hazard posing the unlikely possibility of an oil leak. Some upgrades can be especially challenging when the historic character of the old must be incorporated into the new. This is the case in the exclusive Broadmoor neighborhood where ornamental light poles placed here in the 1920s deteriorated to unsafe standards. The community paid the bill and worked with City Light to have the old poles, which weigh 1,500 pounds each, pulled out to be replaced with identical fiberglass poles that weigh only 100 pounds. Lighting to energy efficient levels is also part of this eye-pleasing upgrade. Well, that wraps up this edition of NTV from here at the beautiful Skagit Project. It's been great showing you around. Don't forget, Skagit tours operate through Labor Day weekend. You can make reservations by calling 684-3030. And thanks to those of you who've been calling with story ideas for NTV. We try to cover as many of them as possible. And the telephone number is 684-3112 for a story idea or to request a previous tape if you'd like to borrow one. I'd like to thank you for coming up to this gadget and having me on NTV. It's time for me to get back to work on one of our boats, the Cascadian. I'm Stephen Thrush from this gadget. And I'm Sharon Bennett for Network on Television. See you next month. Bye-bye.